thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, my name is Helen and I am the Academics and Student Affairs Manager here at Columbia Biomedical Engineering Department. Uh, and today we're basically going to go over a lot of our um, program offerings at the uh, Columbia Biomedical Engineering Department specifically for the master's program. Joining me today is Professor Katie Ruther. She is the director of our master studies, and she will give you an overview of our program. Next up will be myself. I'll go over the degree requirements and the course offerings that we have. And then we will have Ms. Kristen Henlin, who is our career placement officer. She'll go over the career opportunities that our students have. We also have Ms. Susanna Belt joining us. She is a current master's student with our department and she will share her student experience with you. Last but not least, we have uh, Ms. Bianca Matthew. She is representing the Graduate Admissions Office and she will talk about our admission requirements. Now, throughout the presentation, feel free to ask us any questions uh, through the Q&A box. The presentation will also be recorded and sent to you tomorrow for your reference. Um, now, without further ado, I'm going to turn the mic over to Professor Katie Ruther. Great. Thank you so much, Helen. And thanks, everybody, for joining us today to hear a little bit more about our program in Columbia Biomedical Engineering for master's students. So as Helen mentioned, I lead our master's program. And so if you join us, I'll be your academic advisor um, and I'll work with you closely to kind of help design a curriculum that will really optimize your experience here at Columbia. Next slide. So the first question you might be asking yourself is why BME at Columbia? So we have um, a wonderful group of both faculty and students that span the engineering school as well as the medical center. So many of our biomedical engineering faculty actually have their research labs at the medical center. So there is really engagement, uh, interdisciplinary engagement across engineering and the medical center. Of course, New York City is a wonderful asset of ours and there's great opportunities that lie here in terms of life sciences, research, innovation, and entrepreneurship, internship opportunities, and of course, uh, a variety of medical centers in the area to really work towards improving human health through engineering and medicine. And so um, our university and our department in particular really focus on discovery through research as well as innovation and impact. So bringing our discoveries from the lab to the market to impact human health and our master's students can get involved in that process. Next. So a little bit more about New York. Uh, so I mentioned there's nine academic medical centers. There's a lot of great things happening in terms of life science innovation. We have uh, a program called LifeSci NYC that is focused on providing internships, job opportunities, and uh, different space and research facilities for cutting edge life sciences research and discovery, as well as startups and entrepreneurship. The city of New York is also ranked number two in the, in the US in terms of region for NIH funding. So there's a lot of the grant money coming into this area uh, and the mayor of New York and the governor of New York have pledged a billion dollars over the past five years towards initiatives to really make New York City a hub for these, these uh, components. Next. So a little bit more about our department by the number. So we're currently ranked number nine in biomedical engineering departments. Uh, most of the departments that are ranked higher than us are much larger, so we can provide an intimate experience. We have only 23 faculty, um, but they uh, encompass a variety of areas. And we also work closely with medical center faculty and other engineering faculty on some collaborations for engineering and medicine. Our undergrad program is about 87 students. We have about 150 master's students. And that really means we have about 75 or so per year that enter our class. The program is a year and a half long. So when we add that all together, it's about 150 um, at one time um, overlapping in some semesters. And then about 150 PhD students. Uh, we had uh, really great success in terms of life sciences entrepreneurship. Our faculty and students over the past five years have founded 17 different startups and several of those startups have received follow-on investment for the technologies and getting closer towards patients and impacting human health. 
Our research uh, is also very prolific. Our faculty spend about $20 million a year annually in research. So based on the fact that we have 23 faculty, you can see that each faculty, if we were to divide it, is spending about a million dollars towards research and discovery each year um, through grant funding. You could see here our male to female ratio, uh, 46 to 54, and then the faculty to master student ratio is about one to six. Next. So we're really proud of both our students and faculty. Some of our master's students were featured in, in the Forbes 30 Under 30 recently. Uh, one of our faculty was recently awarded the highest academic honor you can have as a faculty member at Columbia called the University Professor. Her name's Gordana Vanyak Novakovic. She also has about five startups, so is also a prolific inventor and entrepreneur. Another faculty member, Professor Aaron Kyle, received the highest honor at Columbia you can get in teaching, the Presidential Award for Teaching. And we're really proud um, of his work. And it's really, uh, we appreciate both outstanding research as well as outstanding teaching. I'll also note that um, our students engage, especially particular master students in startups and entrepreneurship. One of our uh, recent master student graduates co-founded a company called Neopenda um, and raised significant uh, money in terms of prizes and investment in commercializing their technology. And they're very, getting very close to launching uh, very shortly in Africa in the, in the coming months. Next. So the student experience for master's students is really comprised of the following components. Uh, the big distinction between a master's degree and say your undergraduate degree is that yes, we have coursework, a foundation of coursework that's required. You'll have electives as well as two required courses. But what you really want to take advantage of while you're here at Columbia is the application components. So that means getting involved in research or getting involved in design project or other innovation entrepreneurship initiatives at Columbia. And then opportunities for professional development. So really engaging with our alumni community and networking and some of Kristen's initiatives, which, which she'll be discussing shortly. She's our career placement officer. Um, in general, the program is about a year and a half. Most students take three semesters. Uh, if you start in the fall with us, you would do fall, spring, over the summer you do a research or internship opportunity, and then you would finish the following fall while you're applying for jobs and trying to land that position. Next. So where are our graduates? We have several that are in professional employment in industry in consulting and biotechnology. And Kristen will get into that a little bit more later. We also have great success placing our students in doctoral programs at Columbia and other places. And then a few of our students have also attended medical school, dental school, or other health professional schools. Next slide. So one of the things that we're offering uh, more recently and which we're pretty proud of is at, in the master's program, you may, if you'd like, uh, select an elective specialization. It's kind of like a concentration that you might have as an undergraduate student, but this is applied towards the master's. And so there's a menu of courses that you could uh, take in order to specialize in a certain area and discipline in biomedical engineering. And the disciplines listed here are really, or the specializations listed here are really the core strengths of our department and the curriculum that, that you have. So we do recommend checking out the website just to see that menu of courses that we have. And it's totally optional. It doesn't need to be done, but it's uh, definitely something that you're eligible to do here. Next. Um, one of, as mentioned previously, a big component of this is application of biomedical engineering. And part of that is through research opportunities. So you can participate in some of the cutting edge research that's happening in the lab. Many of our faculty open their labs to master students. You can do that in the form of volunteering. You could also get research for credit that's towards your degree. Six credits out of the 30 can be research for credit and that could count towards your master's curriculum. We also have a lot of opportunities for paid summer master's research internships through the School of Engineering uh, coupled with the department that will support, support specifically master's students for summer research. And then of course, there's other research opportunities. You could really do research across DME, so those 23 faculty. You could also work with faculty in mechanical engineering or electrical engineering that are doing more health oriented work, or there's even medical center faculty working on vaccine development, you know, cancer, therapeutics, other things that our BME students also engage in and uh, take part in towards their master's degree in BME. Next. So the last thing I'll, I'll say before I pass it over back to Helen, 
Um, you can see here, this is the mission statement of Columbia University. And if you just take a quick glance, you'll see like many universities, our focus is on teaching and learning and research. Um, but what I've highlighted here at the end is uh, something that might be a little bit different than other universities. And that's our goal and commitment to really convey the products of our efforts to the outside world. And this is through our research and discovery, but it's also through our innovation and translational research and entrepreneurship endeavors, which Columbia has really had some great success in over the past three years. And, 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 and through our partnership with New York City, we're excited to continue uh, along these lines. Next. So I'm now gonna hand it over back to Helen, who is our academic and student affairs manager and happy to address questions in the chat. Thank you, Professor Ruther. So I'm going to extend on Professor Ruther's presentation and go over the details of our degree requirement. In total, our students are required to take 30 credits of classes. So that's approximately 10 classes. And uh, you can see from this list that our degree is actually really flexible to allow you uh, really to learn a set of unique skills for the BME field area. The required courses include BMEN 6003, Computational Modeling of Physiological Systems. And then you'll take one graduate level class at the Applied Math Department. And four graduate level classes that are offered by our own department in BME. And you'll take two semesters of BMEN 9700 Graduate Seminar. Note that this class is zero credits, but we do require students to do it for two semesters. And it is a great opportunity for students to learn about all the research that is happening in the field of BME across the nation. We invite speakers from across the nation where they are the leading researchers in their own field area uh, to talk about their latest research. And so if you are unsure which area of BME you're interested in, this graduate seminar series actually Actually creates a really good platform for you to explore different areas. And then the remainder credits are uh, general tech electives where you can take up to three, credit, uh, three courses at the engineering school, any department in the engineering school at the 4,000 level or higher classes. The remainder three credits, you can take it at a department outside of the engineering school or within the engineering school itself. So that creates an additional flexibility for you to um, cultivate a unique uh, set of classes, right? Uh, in terms of outside of engineering school classes, our students typically um, are interested in taking classes at the business school, at the School of Public Health, um, the biotech department, um, bioinformatics department. And so all of those are possibilities. Professor Ruther did mention that a lot of students uh, enjoy taking the opportunity uh, to be part of our cutting edge research that happens here at Columbia University. And so one of the things you can do to reflect that research effort is to register in um, our master's research course. Up to six credits of that course can be counted towards your degree requirements and it will actually count towards the BME graduate classes um, credits. And so uh, that is a nice way to reflect your research involvement within the program. A way of taking a look at the courses we offer is through our department's website, bme.columbia.edu. Under the main menu, uh, just click on classes, uh, I mean courses, and a list of courses that we have been offering for this academic year will show up on that website for you to take a look at. If you are interested in looking at um, all the possibilities uh, amongst the engineering school or other um, departments across the Columbia University, uh, you can search Columbia University Directory of Classes or Columbia University Virgil. These two platforms are used by our students interchangeably to search for course offerings. Um, the directory of classes provides you 
a comprehensive list of courses a particular department is offering for a certain semester. And so this is a great way for you to explore the possibilities that uh, you can partake while you enroll with us as a student at Columbia University. And so now I'm going to hand over the mic to our career placement officer, Kristen Henlon, who uh, will help our students with a lot of networking, job opportunities, and career services. Thank you for that introduction, Helen. Hi, everybody. My name is Kristen Henlon. Um, I'm the career placement officer for the biomedical engineering department. So my job is to really help you guys find meaningful internships and full-time positions after you graduate from the program. Next slide, please. So this slide's just an overview of the resources that I offer to all of the master's students. As you can see, we have weekly job postings, um, which are now housed on Canvas. So Canvas is um, essentially a website that students use um, to take their classes. They use it for um, homework. They use it for quizzes and tests. And we also house jobs on this platform. So um, I would actually say that I update the jobs probably daily at this point. Um, so there are opportunities that are um, basically divided by the uh, coasts. So we've got East Coast, West Coast, the South, as well as international opportunities for students to apply to. I also offer one-on-one -on -one counseling, which happens via Zoom, um, and mock interview and resume and cover letter support, as well as um, networking opportunities. So we used to do office visits, obviously in person. We haven't done that in a little while. We hope to get back to that when, um, when things are normal again, but information sessions and alumni networking events are all virtual. Um, so they are on Zoom and students have the opportunity to still connect with alumni as well as um, different employers so that they can still um, grow that networking uh, muscle when, whilst they're in school. Next slide, please. So this is an, uh, a very uh, little chart about um, the, um, the MS summer placement statistics in 2019. So these are um, the amount of students who were had summer internships in summer 2019. So as you can see, um, we had 70 students, 60 of the students had summer internships and 10 students were not responsive. So that means that they might've had internships. They just didn't respond to my survey. Next slide, please. Um, and so this is just a breakdown of placement industries in the summer. Um, so as you can see, there are a lot of students who go um, into research um, and there are a lot of students who end up doing other things. So um, we have a lot of students who are interested in the biotech field. As Katie spoke about, uh, there is a really robust internship program in New York City that's been funded by the mayor um, that is LifeSign NYC that is essentially boosting the amount of money um, and the amount of investment and time that we put into biotech companies in this um, in the city. So a lot of students end up doing things in um, biotech Though you can see there's a mixture of artificial intelligence as well as students who want to work on the computational side and data science. We have some students who end up going to pharmaceutical and healthcare. And then a chunk of our students are really interested in life science consulting. So we see um, a good amount of them going there over the summer and then um, working full time for life science consulting firms all around the country. Next slide, please. So this is just a bit of information about our student outcomes in 2019. So in terms of um, the distribution, you can see that most of our MS students end up working in industry. Um, and then a lot of our students also go into research. Um, that might be because a lot of our students are also interested in going to graduate school after the master's program. Um, and so the more research, the better in that case. And as you can see, some of 6% of our students in 2019 went straight from the master's program to the PhD program. Next slide, please. Um, and this is just a further breakdown into um, the percentage of students who went to different industries for their full-time positions. So the majority of the biomedical engineers are in the medical device uh, field, which we, uh, we would have guessed. <laughs> but as you can see, a large, a large chunk of our students are really interested in consulting. Um, they're really interested in biotech and pharma. And um, this program allows you to really build the, the computational skills that if you wish, um, it gives you the opportunity to really build computational skills in a research setting, but also in a classroom setting. Um, so many of our students um, end up using their skills um, and going into more computational style um, fields. 
Next slide, please. And this is uh, this slide is just a list of the major hiring companies that we worked with um, in 2019. So you can see that we have some really big names here. Um, we also have Columbia. Um, we have, have a lot of students who, who work um, at CUMC, which is wonderful. And there is um, a mixture of startups um, and consulting, larger companies in consulting, smaller uh, pharmaceutical companies, larger pharmaceutical companies, um, and medical device um, companies. So this is just a snapshot. There are many, many other companies, but um, we thought this image was a good was a good um, representation of the types of places that our students go. Next slide, please. So um, with that being said, I'm happy to answer questions at the end, but I'm going to uh, give the mic over to Susanna Belt, who is a current BME student, um, who's, who could tell you a little bit about the student experience here. Thank you. Hi, so thank you so much, Kristen, for that great introduction. So hi, everyone. My name is Susanna Belt. I am the MS Student Ambassador for the BME program. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what my experience has been like. And it might seem unique as I'm actually a virtual student this semester. So I'm hoping to go up to Columbia as soon as possible. So let's begin. Next, please. Hi, so one unique thing about Columbia is that even before you step on campus, once admitted, you're actually already brought into the Columbia family. So Columbia has a mentorship program for their MS students where they connect you with professors and students who have similar interests as you so that you can gain more and in, more information about that student's path in Columbia, the, their curriculum, different classes you might want to take, as well as gain insight into uh, their, re uh, their uh, research paths that they had taken, also any electives they had taken as well, to make sure that your experience is as personalized as possible. So in these office hours, you can go to a student office hours or you can go even to professors and they'll help you figure out what lab to pick, any information and their past experience on classes and things of that nature and just how their experience in the program has been so that you can have the best experience possible. Now, when looking at research labs, it's actually funny because everyone I have met at Columbia and everyone I've worked with has been so accommodating and even professors and the faculty, everyone goes out of their way to make sure you have the best experience possible. I cannot emphasize this enough. So when I actually entered in the program last semester, I emailed a variety of professors, um, just saying, just really nicely, hi, my name is Susanna Belt, here's, um, your, interest, your research really interests me. Um, is there a way that I can participate in your, in your class, in your research lab? What can I do, right? I was super excited to be a part of, to, to just dive into the Columbia experience. And one professor, Nandan Nerugad, he his lab was already full, but he said, you know what? Your research interests would actually match my, my colleague, Dr. Giovanni Ferrari at the Columbia Medical School. And so he put me in contact with Ferrari and now I work in his lab uh, studying cardiac biomechanics. So the people go above and beyond to make sure that you're happy and to make sure that you have the best, uh, the absolute best experience at Columbia. Next, please. So the Columbia experience, it wouldn't be the same without the Engineering Graduate Council, right? But in the past, before, you know, pre-COVID, you had a lot of in-person events. We had a boat cruise, which I'm really hoping they invite the alumni back because this sounds amazing. Um, they had Columbia Homecoming. And this, the thing is that even though we can't be in person for at least during this time, it doesn't mean that we are separated, that we're isolated. Next, please. In fact, I would say there's even more events um, virtually that are that actually tie the community closer together. So for example, EGSC has done several game nights and virtual holiday parties, trivia nights, all these things, even bingo, to really boost camaraderie with the students. And not only that, because Columbia does want to foster a sense of innovation and entrepreneurship, they host these free these free seminars, free classes, like Find Your Founder, where if a student has an innovation or an idea, they match you up with alumni who are willing to perhaps fund you for that idea. And as well as, I, as, well as activities such as um, perfecting your elevator pitch, you know, perfecting the 90 second uh, talk you might have in an elevator to try and win someone over to an, a startup idea or innovation. Next, please. 
Now, even further is the BME department. So Go BME is our graduate and is our graduate board for biomedical engineers. We still have a ton of events with that are virtual. There are some in-person events at this point, but on a smaller scale, but we still have peer mentorship programs and, uh, and alum alumni chats every week and things of that nature, as well as the BME holiday party, which is fun. But next, please. On the virtual platform, we even we have movie nights. We, there's a ton of symposiums you actually um, attend virtually, and every Thursday they have a alumni chat with a person from BME. So Columbia does a really great job of connecting you with your fellow alumni. This very strong network of contacts of innovators that you can actually talk to and get advice from and maybe even secure an internship or some advice on a job on uh, job interviews. So next please. So when we're talking about Columbia then, something to, to take note is that there are so many things that you can do here. Um, even as a virtual student, I do not feel disconnected at all. If anything, the virtual platform, whether I believe has actually brought everyone closer together. So for example, in different classes, Instead of having people, you know, group off with like smaller study groups, now there's group me's where the entire class is on it and we're all working on an assignment or we're discussing concepts that were talked about in class. And so if anything, I feel closer than ever than with my professors because everyone has been super helpful and accommodating for this stressful time. For example, I was in neural control engineering last semester and one of our assignments, our professor uh, realized that we had midterms, we had final projects, it was a very stressful time, so he actually moved our assignment day, due date because he wanted to make sure he didn't want to add any more stress on us than what we already had. So the, everyone is super helpful, and they really make you feel like family. Now, with a little bit more about our different resources, then is that you can go. So PDL is this the professional development and leadership program is fantastic. They teach you how to not only improve your speaking skills, they give you interview uh, tips and ways to improve your resume as well. And with Kristen Henlon, the opportunities, she, she really does post opportunities every single day and is amazing. And it's not just a posting for one particular uh, section of BME, right? It's not only biomaterials. There's also machine learning and biomaterials and, and even neural control engineering. So there is something for everyone at Columbia. And honestly, when, when you're accepted into the program, you really do become very close with, with Kristen and Katie and Helen, and they are amazing. So I absolutely love Columbia, and I hope you guys do too. So uh, they, uh, thank you. So next, please. And now I'll turn it over to Ms. Bianca Matthew. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Susanna. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I will spend the next 10 minutes talking a little bit more about our admissions criteria and what is needed for a complete application, as well as um, elaborate a little bit more on student life at Columbia Engineering. Next slide, please. So now we'll talk a little bit more about what is needed for a complete application um, and what requirements are needed um, for our school. Next slide, please. Great. So what do you need for a complete application? So the first step is creating an online application. And so you can find that on our website at gradengineering.columbia.edu. Um, once you create your application and you add your educational background and personal background, you would be able to see a list of the requirements that are needed and that includes um, official copies of your transcript. And so to elaborate a little bit more on that requirement, you will not be sending your official transcript directly to us. You will be requesting um, an official, um, your official transcript to be sent to yourself, and then you will be uploading a copy of that official transcript to your application. Um, our other requirement includes three letters of recommendation. 
Um, the GRE test scores is optional for the spring and fall um, application cycle. If you are interested in submitting your GRE scores, if you've taken your GRE um, and you have received scores that you would want to add to your application, you can definitely do that. Um, if you decide not to um, submit your GRE scores, it will not be held against you. Your application will not be um, looked at or received a lower um, review because you have not submitted your GRE scores. So I just wanted to point that out. In addition to that, we require your resume slash CV, your personal statement, um, and more details on a personal statement on our board account can be found on our website. If you have completed your undergraduate degree at an institution in a non-English speaking country, um, you are required to submit your TOEFL or ILED scores. We are actually also allowing applicants to submit to lingual scores. There are a few exceptions to that requirement um, and those that policy can be found on our website. It's, a, it's um, very detailed and a, um, a lot for us to go through at this moment. Um, but just overall, if you have completed your undergraduate degree at an institution in a non-English speaking country, um, you will most likely have to submit your English um, speaking test scores. And then we also require application fee of $85. On the bottom of this, um, of this slide, you will see our priority deadline and it is December 15th for our doctoral students and February 15th um, for the master's program. And so since we're talking about master's, I'm um, just wanting to point out that our priority deadline is February 15th. However, we are we do operate on a rolling admissions basis. So that means even after February 15th, you are still you still have the opportunity to submit your application. Next slide, please. So here is a timeline of our application deadlines. Um, as noted before, for our master's program, the priority deadline is February 15th. Um, that is the priority deadline. It is not um, our hard deadline. We operate, again, we operate on a rolling admissions basis. Next slide, please. So Susanna um, spent some time talking about student life. So I will summarize this um, and just add a few, um, a few talking points to this slide. Um, Helen, if you can move over to the next slide. Thank you. So here are a list um, of our student organizations. This is just a few of them. We have a number of um, organizations on campus um, that give our students the opportunity to take part in leadership positions and really um, be involved in what's going on on campus. Um, as you can imagine, because of COVID, um, some of these um, organizations are operating virtually, but there are, there are still opportunities to um, connect with um, these groups on campus as well. Next slide, please. At Columbia Engineering, um, the life that you have had in under, during your undergraduate year, so being involved in organizations, taking part in volunteer work, um, being involved in community building opportunities and so forth does not end there. Um, even as a graduate student at Columbia Engineering, you have the opportunity to take part in, in such, um, such activities. And so we really support a holistic graduate student life experience. Um, we always encourage our students to participate in events and activities to network um, with other students in their field, also giving them the opportunity to meet alums and faculty as well. And so on this slide, you can see a few photos here of our graduate socials. And those are socials that students have had um, with their classmates, but also with alumni and faculty. And then these are um, a few photos of our community building activities. And so those happen both on campus and off campus, and they can include um, Broadway shows, um, sport events, movie nights, game nights, um, community service and anything along those lines. And so also if you're a part of um, the organizations that we just had in our previous slide, you can also um, be a part of creating opportunities for other students to take part in such activities. Next slide, please. And so that concludes our webinar um, today. Here you can see a list of our social media handles as well as our phone number and 
the email address for graduate admissions. Um, if you do have program specific questions, I would encourage you to reach out to the department. However, if you have questions about application requirements, um, the application itself, or anything along that sort, um, the deadlines or anything that I mentioned here today, please send us an email at seedsgradmate at columbia.edu. Um, at this time, I will pass it back to Helen and I just wanted to thank you all for joining us here today. Thank you, Bianca. And so along the same lines, I do invite you to follow us on social media. Our department is very active on social media, especially Facebook uh, and Instagram. All of our department events that are open to the public will be posted there as well. Um, if you have any questions that Professor Ruther, Kristen, uh, Susanna, or I are unable to address uh, during this presentation today, feel free to email us at bme-ms at columbia.edu. We try our best to um, answer all your questions possible. Um, and so we're now going to open the floors for questions and start answering uh, most of the questions in the Q&A box as well. And if we feel some of the questions in the Q&A box are more suitable for um, everyone to hear, we will answer it live. Thank you.